Hi, y'all. This is Yogini Mary Burris of Flowering Cactus and Rethink Fitness. And I promise to do one new yoga practice every week during the stay in place orders. And now we have moved to intermediate level. So this is really exciting. If you're seeing this for the first time, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and you'll see uh, progressive yoga practices all the way up to this level so that you can start at the very beginning with chair yoga and move up to this space. If you're already a practitioner, you can enjoy all those practices. They're still going to be awesome for you. It doesn't matter what level you are. So here we go, intermediate level. We're going to begin and I won't be explaining everything so much in this video because you've already gotten to the intermediate level. So, yay. All right, so you know Tadasana, stand in Tadasana, palms at the heart. Inhale for Om. Om. Wonderful, and just take a moment to breathe in, bring your shoulders up to your ears, exhale, roll them back and down, and just feel how solid and nice it is to stand in Tadasana. And then um, I'm gonna use blocks and a strap today. Uh, so I'm going to just use the blocks for the first round of sun salutation because I find that they really assist in getting a nice stretch in the hip flexor. And I've been doing a lot of sitting lately, so I wanna make sure that I get the best stretch for my hip flexor possible. So coming to the top of the mat, setting your feet and getting in your Tadasana, breathe in, exhale, palms to the heart, inhale, the arms come up, lift up out of the hips, little back bend just to get warmed up, exhale, forward fold. So we'll stay here for a few breaths. I find it beneficial to uh, clasp my elbows with my hands, which helps me to resist the urge to force down. We're just going to relax everything from the hips to the head. So we're nice and loose. If you nod your head, yes, your body naturally moves. You don't move it on purpose. If you shake it now, it naturally moves. Take a big breath in. Exhale, release the hands, bring them underneath the kneecaps, inhale, come halfway up, nice flat back. Exhale, I'm going to put my hands on the block, step my right foot back, lining up my front ankle and knee, and weight is in the hands here, breathe in, exhale, ah, let that hip flexor just go, and by, by using my hands to, to support my weight, that hip flexor can really just relax instead of supporting my body. So that feels amazing. So two more breaths here. That's two. And one. And then bring the blocks with me. I'm going to, I'm going to stick the tailbone out to lengthen the leg back and then draw the toes towards the shin to lengthen the leg forward. Open the heart, shoulders are down, back and down. Three, two, and one. Coming forward, breathe in, let the right arm rise up. Exhale, taking it to the outside of the left knee, and twist. So getting in the first twist of the day. Shoulders are away from the ears. Inhale, let the arms come up. Exhale, they come down. Both feet come back and come into plank. So up to this point, we've been putting the knees down on the floor for Chaturanga. Today, we're going to go straight down. So elbows hug in and graze the ribs. We come down, hold stick for a moment and then inhale, coming up. And at this level, we can go straight into up dog. You can always begin with a cobra if you prefer. Exhale, downward facing dog. So always remember to keep your hands and feet right where they were in your plank. 
Okay, so that means your feet should be hip distance apart. Your hands should be shoulder, um, yeah, hands should be shouldered width. Fingers are spread nice and wide. Come up on all ten toes. Exhale, let one heel come down and breathe. Inhale, up on all ten toes. Exhale, let the other heel come down. Inhale, up on all ten toes. Exhale, both heels come back and down. So the most common mistake that I see in down dog is that people bend their back like this. This will cause lower back pain after a while. So remember to tuck the hips so that the uh, belly button comes up towards the ribs to flatten the back. That's the purpose of this pose is to lengthen the spine. So breathe in here. Two more breaths. Two. And one. Inhale, gaze goes between the hands and lifting the right leg to three-legged dog, stepping that foot any way that you need to get it there up to the right thumb. Oops, again, I'm going to use my blocks because I really prefer it for this particular stretch. Breathe in and exhale. Ah, whew, lovely. It feels good to stretch that hip flexor. Remember the shoulders are back and down. And five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, bring the blocks back with you, same pose. Tailbone out, toes towards the shin. Shoulders are back and down, the heart is open, breathe. Now I do it this way again to get the most length out of the leg. Three more breaths. Three. Two. And one. Inhale, come forward and the left arm comes up. Exhale, it comes to the outside of the knee and twist. Hold for one more breath. And then on the inhalation, the arms rise up. Exhale, they come to the mat and Step the left foot up to meet the right immediately on that inhalation. Come halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, palms to the heart. Okay, so we'll have two more sun salutations. And I'm not going to be using the blocks this time. Um, and we'll be using the sequence of sun salutations a little bit more in the practice. So finding Tadasana. I'm going to bring my toes together. My heels are apart at this point. Toes are spread nice and wide. Breathe in. Exhale. Palms to the heart. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Arda. Exhale. So both feet come back. And Chaturanga, Dandasana. Inhale, come up. Exhale, back and down. Five. Four. Three. Two and one. Gaze goes between the hands. You can walk or float the feet immediately halfway on that inhalation. Exhale, forward fold. Breathe in. Come all the way up. 
Exhale, palms to the heart. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale into your up position. Exhale, downward facing dog, five breaths. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Gaze goes between the hands and walk or float the feet. Inhale immediately, Arna. Exhale. Inhale up. Exhale. Palms to the heart. Lovely. Now we'll go straight into the balancing pose. We've been working on tree pose so that if you want to uh, practice tree right now at this point, feel free to do that. You can, you know, experiment with where your foot goes at this point in tree. Um, I'll be practicing a different balance pose, so feel free to join me if you like, or just practice tree, whichever feels good. So, planting the foot, and we worked on this last, last video, I believe, where we started here. This is the beginner level of this pose, so now in the intermediate, um, you can start uh, working on finding your toe and lengthening the leg and eventually getting the leg nice and straight. Hips even, this is really important. So breathe in here. And then slowly when you're ready, whatever position you are, taking this out to the side. The gaze probably is on the floor, so if you want to experiment with lifting the gaze, that's cool. If you want to Experiment with having your arm out to the side with your thumb up. That's awesome, too. And then bringing it back, lifting the leg up, and then we're going to hold here. So um, a lot of times people will lean back in this position, but you want to keep the shoulders and hips stock, stacked. And so I'm going to uh, demonstrate from the side next time. Lower it down. So you can see, let me just, there we go, sorry. <laughs> so on the other side, notice I'm planting my foot. That is the basis for good balance. Um, if you need to know the basics for good balance, I have that on my YouTube channel, Mary Burris of Flowering Cactus. So again, your choices are here, here, here. Okay, so here's, here's the proper way to hold the leg up. Notice my shoulders and hips, everything is lined up, but a lot of people want to do this so they can keep their leg up higher. I can't even, <laughs> it just throws me off balance. So you don't want to be leaning back because now you're putting pressure on the lower back. So it's better to have your leg lower and be stacked. So, you know, if you don't know if you're stacked or not, do this in front of a mirror at some point or in front of your camera on your computer. That works too. And when you're ready, lower that down. Let's shake that out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm working on some warrior poses. And we've started with warrior one and two. We're gonna go through a little standing sequence. I'm just gonna turn to this side for variety. <laughs> so finding Tadasana, breathe in. Step the right foot back, so it's at a 45 degree angle. The shoulders and hips are stacked, so you're going to need to tuck your hip 
and then you want to adjust them so that they're facing forward. Bend that front leg to a 90 degree angle. That means the knee and the ankle are stacked. And there we are, warrior one. Beautiful. This pose is um, great for instilling in your mind and body this idea of being forceful, but rather than being forceful, it being able to withstand the, the things that come at you, you know, like you're a warrior, but you're, you know, steadfast. Okay, so from here, lowering the arms, taking the right arm back, adjusting the feet, and coming to warrior two. Now, the, my torso is facing the long side of the mat, Again, 90 degree angle here, and my hips are taut. Gaze goes over the left middle finger. A lot of people want to bring their shoulders up, bring them down. Think about lengthening, sending energy out of your fingertips. Breathe here. This is another strong, you know, uh, bring it to me kind of, I can with stand all kinds of things, resilient sort of pose. And now we're going into side angle. So bending this uh, left arm, bringing the forearm onto the front leg. A lot of people want to go forward here. Forget that. You're going to wrap this arm around, bring the top shoulder back, which lines your torso up with your leg. That's the proper, proper form. And then the arm can come next to your ear. You want to make a straight line from your fingertips all the way down to the side of your leg. So this is like the, the um, beginner version of this pose. You can also come down as long as you want to keep your torso, your heart open rather than collapsing down. This is not the pose. This is the pose. This is what is giving you the benefit. And again, straight line. Gaze at the fingers. Inhale and come up. Straighten this leg. We'll go directly into triangle. It's a beautiful, easy transition. So here, taking the hips out to the side and lean directly over that leg. Not, again, the classic mistake is to lean forward to get further down. You know, the object of this game is to keep your hips and your torso lined up, not how far you can go down. No weight in this hand. Protract the shoulder up like you're going to touch the ceiling. So I'm keeping this all straight, not collapsing down. This is a triangle. <laughs> okay. So here we go. And then my gaze can go up at my fingers. So everything is nice and long and there's no weight here. And I'm right over, pulling this hip back, pressing this hip forward, right over that leg. Inhale and come up. And then step this leg forward. I'm gonna turn the hips to face the short side of the mat and uh, practice a forward fold. So, uh, finding the bind looks like this here. Or if you can practice reverse prayer, you can go there. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, come to halfway. And then you can turn the torso toward your leg and come down. And breathe in, come up, release the arms, and find your Tadasana. Okay, so I'm just walking over to this side of the mat. We're going to do that same sequence on this side. So, goodness, this mat making me nuts today. <laughs> Makes me nuts every day when it's on the carpet, actually. All right, so here we go. Breathe in, the arms come up. The left foot comes back. Warrior one. Five breaths. Five. 
four. Oh, my screen went dark. You stay there. I just need to make sure I'm still rolling here. Come on, boo. There we go. You should be at two. And one. Okay, from here, the arms lower, left arm comes out. Adjust your feet. Find warrior two on this side. So I apologize for that, having to come to the screen and, and tap it. <laughs> but um, until I get a nice camera to do this, I'm doing this on my Mac, and sometimes uh, it just, uh, the screen goes dark, and I'm not sure if we're still recording. At least we're getting a practice in, so that's the good news. Okay, one more big breath. And then coming to extended side angle, setting it up, level one, level two, five, four, three, two, And one. Inhale, prepare for triangle. Hip and lean. Look for that alignment. Four. Three. Two, and one. Inhale and come up. Step the foot up a bit. Find your, whatever your arm position will be. Inhale, and exhale, come halfway. And then if you come down, come on down. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Inhale, come up, and release, and step to the top of the mat. Beautiful. Now it's time to come down to the floor and I like to come down using Malasana, the garland pose or the birthing pose. So feet come out to the sides, inhale, exhale, come down, the elbows come to the thighs and press. So then your elbows need to be inside the, the legs so that when you press, you're opening up the hips. So breathing here, inhale, Exhale, turn to look to one side. Breathe in. Exhale, turn to look the other way. Inhale, exhale, come on down. So, forward fold here. Actually, we'll start with stick pose. So, the hands come next to the hips. Inhale, lift the chest up, engage the Mula Bandha. Exhale, chin lock here, hold the breath. Release, inhale, the arms rise up. Exhale, forward fold. So at this level, you should know which forward fold works for you. Four. Three, two, and one. Inhale, come up. Hands come behind you, fingers facing the glutes. Bend the legs a little bit. Inhale, reverse plank. Toes are pointing down towards the floor. 
and breathe in and lower and prepare for twist. So today, bent leg twist. So the um, I'm going to bring my right foot to my left hip. Left leg is going over. That means the right arm wraps around. Facing forward, breathe in, lift up, exhale, twist. And if you take a bind, you can take a bind that looks like this or like this, or maybe you do this bind, whichever one feels good to you. Three more breaths. Three. Two. And one. Inhale. Exhale, release. And so for this one, to get to the other side, I, I have this little trick. So um, the hands come to the top leg, the arch of that foot. Lift up. Walk the hands behind you. Keep your feet where they are. And keep going until you come into the other side, <laughs> like so. All right, so I'm just gonna turn to the front, otherwise I'll be looking away from you. Okay, left arm, breathe in, exhale. Oh, I'm looking away from you anyway, and twist. Five, four, Three, two, and one. Breathe in, exhale, release. Okay, so uh, from here, we'll go into back bend. So today, we'll start experimenting with wheel, if you're, if you're up for that. So to come down to the floor, breathe in, plant your feet, and exhale, come down one vertebra at a time. Keep this evenly down the spine. Scooch the heels up towards the glutes, and press the feet into the floor, tuck the shoulder blades. Now it's super important to tuck the shoulder blades, interlace your fingers, and press up. So here we are in the bridge pose. Always look directly up in this pose. Five. Four. Three. Two, and one, lower it down. So um, keep everything tucked because you're just gonna go right back into the bridge. We'll do three rounds of back bends. And this time you can start experimenting with keeping your hips in the same place and lifting one leg at a time if that feels good. will really help to build strength in your glutes and upper legs and your back and bring that down and keeping those shoulders tucked come well actually we'll just release so you can choose to do one more round here or you of bridge you can choose to rest or you can choose to uh, go into the wheel. So, wheel looks like this if you're going to do that. If you're going to do something else, just do whatever you're going to do. Hands come next to the ears. I always like to <laughs> wipe my hands first. Uh, fingers are pointing towards the shoulders. Breathe in, press into the hands, and come up. So, you want to hug your thighs towards each other and you want to try for getting your arms nice and straight. And then breathe five breaths here. I'm unable to hold it very long because I had a wrist injury in December. 
And so I need to come down off of that wrist. All right, so when you're done with your back bends, hugging the knees in towards the chest and rocking from side to side. That just feels good. Okay, so now it's time for inversion so that we can get one uh, really good hip stretch in towards the end using a strap. So um, you know how to do legs up. So if you're practicing legs up today, go ahead and go into that. I'm going to demonstrate the proper way to go into a shoulder stand. Most people just roll up into the shoulder stand. And if you do that over time, you will injure, you can injure the cervical spine. You can also be putting too much pressure on your neck because you've rolled into it. So I practice it tucking the shoulders as we do in bridge, which protects the cervical spine to prevent injury over the long term. Um, this is super important. And I see people just roll up all the time. I've seen even seasoned teachers allow it in their classes and it makes me cringe. So let's be safe in our yoga practice. I'm going to demonstrate this first. You'll need to watch first, and then I can talk you through it. So it's just like coming into bridge. We press the hips up, tuck the shoulders. This is super important to keep those shoulders nice and tucked. So you have a little bridge over the base of the cervical spine, and then lowering the hips down. You'll use your abs to get your knees up to your forehead and then take your hands and support your lower back. And then from here, raising your legs up. So the weight should be on your shoulders and not your neck. And there's this lovely little pocket still protecting, a little bridge made by your shoulder blade protecting that cervical spine. So there's my spine, my neck is not bearing weight here. So that's awesome. To come out, you can just release the hands and come down one vertebra at a time, or you can change the position of your hands and come down into Bhadakonasana. So, all right, now you can try it. If you want to try it, lie down on your back, bring your heels towards your glutes, press into your feet, Tuck your shoulders, clasp your fingers, or seriously press your arms into the floor. Drop the hips down. Bring the knees to the forehead. Take your hands to your back for support, and then bring your legs up. Okay. Um, you do not have to practice this. And if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Go ahead and practice legs up. That's the beauty of yoga, is learning to listen to your body instead of pushing and doing, you know, things just because other people are doing them. Learn to listen to what you need. Okay, inversions are super awesome. And so you'll want to stay in your inversion for a while. So you people who went into legs up earlier, you're getting an awesome inversion time. So while I'm here, sometimes I get bored. So um, I like to spread the toes and close them. Not that taking care of my body is boring. but I can take care of it while I'm here. And pointing and flexing the feet. And drawing circles in the air with my toes. And in both directions. It's a great little exercise for the feet while I'm here. Okay, so from here, I'm going to come down not in the bridge. So I'm just releasing the arms down and keeping those shoulders together and coming down one vertebra at a time. Now when I get to the place to spread the shoulders apart, that will naturally happen. 
but I did not put pressure on that spine. So keeping the palms down and lowering the legs. So if you're in legs up, come on out and prepare for uh, fish pose. I like doing it this way because I can come right into fish. So coming up on the elbows, lifting the heart up, placing the head on the floor. And here we are, beautiful fishes. This is an awesome pose to do particularly in the springtime. And it is the counter pose to shoulder stand, so it is a really good pose to do. So just breathing in fish. And to come out of fish, inhale, lift the head, tuck the chin, and come down. Okay, so at the intermediate level, we begin to prepare also for headstand. So I'll demonstrate the dolphin, and we'll have hip stretches, and then it'll be time for your shavasana. <laughs> okay, so I know this practice is longer than we've been doing, too. So in order to practice the dolphin pose, which is the preparation for headstand, you uh, first come down onto the floor and the proper spacing is this. You, so you just take your hands to your elbows and that's the proper distance to have your elbows. So elbows are here. Now I take my arms directly out in front, turn the toes under and lift the uh, hips up into the air and then walk the feet forward. So now my face, my nose is in between my elbows. As I inhale, my nose is between my thumbs. Exhale, back. Inhale and exhale. So this is the movement of the dolphin swimming through the waves. This is intense, <laughs> can be intense on your arms. So if you can only do a few, that's awesome. Just do as many as you can, up to, you know, 10 or so. And then you come down and come into child's pose. Big breath in and out through the mouth. Okay, so from here, I wanted to get, um, some hip stretches in using the strap. I'm going to turn this way so that you can see what I'm doing. All right. So I start with both feet on the floor, hips are tucked. And I take my fabulous strap and I'm going to start with my right foot and put the strap around the ball of the foot and put this in my right hand. I'm lifting my heel up towards the ceiling and my toes down towards the floor. Inhale here, and on the exhalation, I'm drawing my toes towards the floor as though they were gonna to touch the floor behind my head. And breathe. Five. Everything else relaxes. Four, if you feel like you need more stretch, you can lengthen that left leg down to the floor. Three. Two. And one. Okay, I bring this leg to perpendicular. I'm putting the left foot back on the floor and taking the left knee out to the side. This keeps my hips down because I'm going to take this leg out to the side. So a common mistake here is people have their leg way down here. That is not going to cut it, people. It's got to be, it's got to be to the side, not down. Okay, so breathing here, four, three, two, And one. 
and then here. Now this is the trickiest part, it's switching the hands with the strap, pressing this right hip down. This is where people make mistakes a lot. So you wanna, I actually take my hand to hold the hip down and bring the leg across. Now I'll know, <laughs> the yoga teacher knows. Oops, you've gone dark, I gotta save you. Sorry, you just stay right where you are. There we go. All right. You wanna keep that hip down. So it's not here. You see how my hip came way up? It's down here. And you won't be able to go very far until you feel a stretch, either in your IT band or your hamstring or the backs of your knees. And inhale, come up. Okay, just drawing this knee towards your armpit for a second and then straighten it out. And you should feel the difference from one side to the other at this point. Okay, left side, here we go. Strap goes in the left hand. Breathe in. Exhale, big toes towards the floor behind your head. Now you may notice the difference between one side and the other, that's completely normal. Three. Two. And one. And then bring this leg back to perpendicular. The right leg bends, hold that right leg down with your right arm and the left leg on an exhalation comes out to the side. Relax whatever you can. Four. Three. Two. And one. Bring this leg back to perpendicular. Change sides with the strap, pressing that left hip down. The right, this leg goes across the body. But remember, just press that hip down into the floor to get the benefit of this stretch. Oh, that feels so good. <laughs> Three more breaths. Three. Two. And one. And let's bring it. Knee towards the armpit. Bring the other knee up. Rock from side to side. And then go ahead and prepare for your Shavasana. So, lying down on the mat. Let your feet flop out to the sides. Let your shoulder blades come towards each other slightly, palms face up. Gently and slowly turning your head from side to side. And finding stillness, closing the eyes, and take a big deep breath in. Exhale through the mouth. And just let a wave of relaxation flow over your body. Let all of your muscles sink down and towards the mat. Relaxing every muscle, every joint, every tendon, every bone, every single cell of your body. And allow your mind to focus on your breathing. The gentle expansion of your chest and belly as you inhale. And the contraction of your chest and belly as you exhale. 
Allow each breath to lull you further into a space of relaxation. And feel free to stay here for up to 20 minutes. So as you're in your Shavasana, I just want to thank you for sharing your practice today. I hope you're enjoying these free yoga videos. And namaste. And if you would like more, you can find more on my YouTube channel at Mary Burris of Flowering Cactus.